Hey guys, Basil and Will from Grayson Hobby, and today we have the Firefly R130. Well, I'm, I say fast, I'm used to like, it, holy cow. Now this was sent to us by Vifly. They sent us an email saying, hey, we've seen you guys' YouTube videos and all that. We know you're a business. Uh, we want to send you one of these quads, give it a run through and see what you think. Um, Cause they got a new product on the market and they wanted us to try it. Right. They wanted our opinion. We did not pay for this product. They sent it to us free. Yeah. It's the greatest. Oh, you gotta buy one. <laughs> How the YouTube reviews are. Right. Do as best we can an unbiased review even though we sent this for free overall it looks pretty nice but we'll see how it goes right and you know our motto if we like it we'll carry it so will we carry this one we'll have to watch the video we got the vifly uh one r130 what does that mean uh well it's a company called vifly no, I mean, it's one, the 130. <laughs> oh okay sorry sorry 30 millimeter quad uh, is from motor to motor motor center to motor center yeah well yeah, actually it's a hair bigger on that one so it's close. It's like a 135. 30 is more of a class, like a three inch prop class. Designed for more for beginners and all that. Uh, it's a pretty cool little quad. It's built very strong. Um, it looks very nice overall. Came with the props installed. It actually came just like this other than the strap. I, I lost the strap and I had to put another strap. Definitely looks different than any traditional quad. Yes, this think. is, they really look, were going for something that's gonna be durable, beginner friendly, easy to use. Obviously no assembly kind of thing is what they're aiming for. Right. A little hefty, but realistically, unless you're building like an ultralight three inch quad, it's about on par with most of the three inch quads I've flown. So Main quad we weight. 168.8 grams. Yeah. It's gotta come with here. Well, the quad itself came out of the box with the antenna installed, came with the uh, props installed, which I actually kind of wish they didn't install the props. I understand why they did it, so people don't put the wrong ones on, because again, this is more catered for a beginner um, that's not very familiar with it. Um, but the props were pre-installed. Well, the props have different directions, right? That's why. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's clockwise and counterclockwise. Right. Noted, notated also about the cap, one of the go different directions. Yeah, the next. cap color and just that not for props in it. just not for looks. It actually, does a has meaning to it. With a couple little extras here, right. Velcro for your battery. Okay. Which also one? came with the f factory installed the little foam landing pads on okay. it. It did come with some rubber ones. Whether you want to add it to it or um, just completely remove them and switch them. Allen wrench to work on it. A couple extra screws with a little wrench, proper wrench. Wow, a steel metal wrench versus those plastic ones. Yeah. Set of props. Did not come with an extra set of props. Oh, that's not um, good. Actually, with the manual. Manual looks pretty um, good. Manual's not bad. It's glossy color. It talks about the mainly the Fly Sky radio version. So if you got a ready to fly version, it would have the Fly Sky radio with it. It was mentioned about the Tyrannus one and all that. It's a little more vague on the Tyrannus and it mentioned something about being a spectrum option as well. So it looks like they're going to offer all three. Yeah. It's about the LED display and all that. And actually, uh, one thing I like about it, it kind of it talks about the uh, low voltage. If you see a three cell battery under 10.5 or a four cell under 14. So it actually gives you a little bit of insight what to expect um, you know, higher or lower than a certain voltage, which is pretty nice. Wow, that is nice. Um, so they gave a little background information. I think they could have used more printing, you know, they put a little more information in there. Well, you know what they should put here? QR code? No. Oh, Grace and Sticker? Yeah, that. they could do that. Cool thing about the quad, it is designed for three or four cell. So that's pretty nice. Um, again, the props are 3045 Dow props. What motors are those? These are um, 4100 KB 1306s. I don't know. Uh, it's a, a 700 TV line CMOS camera and Looks like it moves there. This cap on it. Yeah, it's adjustable tilt so on how it. You, how do you, um, so you can actually get fairly high tilt on this thing. Yeah. I don't know if you'd fly that high, but the props would be in the way. Uh, that's the downside. It uses purely the rubber friction wedged in there. Okay. Um, so I would imagine as it gets used a lot, um, it might, like if you crash into something, it might move the camera a little bit. I kind of wish they had some kind of um, maybe reinforcement system or like a little shim or something to hold that tighter. Um, not that this one's loose, but I could imagine some of them being a little I loose. I guess if you crash a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, and it, I don't know if it's going to cause any jello or anything like that in that one. Uh, ESC is actually a four in one here. So the motors are soldered in, the wires run up to this PDB, the PDB is going to run down and then up to a plug in ESC. So they made the four in ESC with the power lead. Um, it's all four ESCs on one little plate. So if you end up burning one up, you replace the whole plate, but you can do it without soldering, which is really nice that again cool. yeah. for beginners. Yep. This, so how hard is it to get that in there? 
To change the ESC, you'd unscrew the four screws here, uh, and then there's three screws there. You lift the top plate off and replace it. Okay. These are 15 amp with a 20 amp burst. They are BL Heli S, so they do run DSHOT 600, which is a new digital protocol. Um, that allows you to not have to calibrate the ESCs like multi-shot and one-shot used to be. Uh, it makes it a lot easier setting up. Everything's like more in sync. Yeah, beginners, it's, yeah, it's a lot better. Yeah. It's the flight controller inside is a Betaflight uh, F4 flight controller. F4, okay. It's running beta flight. Uh, I believe it came with 317, which would probably update as time goes on. We're just, beta flight's always updating, so you'll probably see different firmware depending on when you buy it. Flight controller is based off an Omnibus F4 with an OSD built in. So this has beta flight OSD, so it's fully adjustable. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff going on beta flight with OSD, especially the, where you can put all kinds of alarms and uh, information display on it. So you can really uh, dial this and fine tune if you want. Receiver, like I was saying, is a this is a Tyrannus model or that uh, FreeSky model. The antenna's here. This is actually running to an XM Plus receiver, it looks like, inside. I wasn't able to take the quad completely apart. There's a ribbon cable going between the top board and the, the flight controller, um, and you can't really get to anything in there without, I didn't want to tear anything up before we actually got a chance to fly it, but I, it looks like they wired the XM Plus receiver to the board so they can use this bind button here, so you don't have to take the quad apart to bind it, which oh, is really nice. nice. Um, the USB port right here is for flashing and updating firmware and all that, uh, or changing beta flight settings, which now this is beta flight OSD, so you can change a lot of the PIDs and settings and all that right through the on-screen display, which is really nice. So um, especially those that are new to it, you might never have to connect it to the computer, which is really cool. Wow. The other button on this thing is the channel button, and that is for the VTX. This front thing here, we might have touched on it earlier, this, will, this little display will actually tell you, and I'm gonna plug in the battery very briefly just to show you. Um, you'll see it lights up and it's gonna tell you your battery voltage. And then it'll say channel and that's A1. Um, and it has three different powers. It's actually a 25 milliwatt, uh, 200 milliwatt and 500 milliwatt selectable. And that's changed by holding the button for I believe it's three seconds. One, two, three, now yep, second changed. power. Yep. One, two, three. Oh, I didn't hold it all the way. One, two, three. All right, that so goes. by just holding that channel button, and you're changing channels and... Yeah, um, it allows you to change the power of the VTX. Oh, the power of the VTX. Yeah, so you can change the power by holding it. You can see there. So once you get it to that, you can change it uh, either 25 milliwatt, 200 milliwatt, or 500 milliwatt. 500 milliwatt? Yeah, but, um, you know, the you got to remember if you're not flying really far away, 25, 200 is probably better. 500? 500 milliwatts. Wow. So it can get some pretty di good distance on it. On the it has the channel, so I can switch channels there, and then it just cycles through the bands and the channels. Okay. It tells you your channel and your voltage. I love this little voltage thing. This is one of the things on the Wizard we always talk about. People starting out always buy one of those little lipo alarms with the buzzer built in um, because it'll have a display that'll tell you your battery voltage, and when it gets low, it'll start beeping. Well, this quad actually has essentially that on it because you have your uh, display there, which is really nice, easy to read without the battery strap getting in the way. And also, it has a buzzer down in here. If you look down in here, there's actually a buzzer oh, as well. Yeah, yep. So with the buzzer, you can program it to do various alarms, stuff like that, uh, lost plane finder, stuff like that. Um, or in this case, lost quad finder. They packed a lot of stuff in this. Um, I wish it would have been a little easier to work on. I understand this is not really, they don't want you working on, like they don't want you taking apart. That's why they made the ESCs accessible uh, without taking the quad apart and soldering and all that. But I kind of wish they would have made like a um, uh, interlocking plug to take the bottom board off to work on it because the flight controller has a ribbon cable inside. Those and ribbon someone, cables suck. Yeah, if you don't, I mean, if you're not expecting it, if you go to take it apart, you could rip the ribbon cable and then you got to wait for parts, stuff like that. You are expecting it's, they're a pain in the neck to work with. Yeah. So they got a lot of features in this. Yeah. So this is what a battery size that we can use milliamp wise. That is one of the things that's kind of a oh crap situation because they're using an XT30 connector, which is smaller than your standard XT60. So this is gonna be a smaller connector. Not everybody has these, and the guys that do have them, they're typically like a 500 milliamp battery mm -hmm. um, for like the lizards and uh, SPCs. So and they're smaller, one. smaller. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm using an 850 milliamp uh, tattoo because it's actually what I had laying around that was like one of the only batteries that fit this size. That is an being odd too heavy. size quad right there. Yeah, or a battery. so you're gonna find, you're gonna want probably around a um, 700, uh, 800, 900 milliamp, somewhere in that pack. With an XT30. Um, with an XT30, three cell or four cell. Uh, if you're new at it, I would stick with three, three cell, cell, keep it a little bit lighter, less likely to burn stuff up. Um, four cells definitely gonna give more pep to it, but at the same time, you're more likely to damage something if you crash or don't tune it. Arms, 
on this particular one, so the arm on the front and back is a solid plate. So if you break an arm, which I don't know, I mean, it's pretty damn solid. It's three millimeter carbon. Um, but if you break it, you'd unscrew the motors, unscrew the four screws here, and you can take off the whole plate and then swap it out, which is pretty nice, front and back. The bottom plate's solid carbon. The middle piece is plastic, it looks like, um, and then the top is a PC board. But the frame okay. looks pretty nice. All right, enough talk, let's go fly. Oh, that's fast. Well, I'm, I say fast, I'm used to like, it, holy cow, like like a little brush stuff. It's okay. So that's the Viva Vi, Viva Las Vegas 130. Vi, Vi Fly R130, yep. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool little quad. It's definitely designed for someone that just wants something that they can go out and fly with. But it's got bells and whistles that yeah. you find in more advanced quads. They didn't make a subpar product. They took the features that work, the Betaflight OSD and all that, the better speed controls, the better software. You're not dealing with outdated ESCs. You're not dealing with outdated firmware and all that right. on these. So it's pretty up to date. It's high it's quality. Pretty cool. It's high yeah. quality for sure. If you're not one of those people that just want to upgrade everything about right. it, um, basically buy the quad, buy some props and some batteries, and I think you'd be good to go. If you want something that flies and works, this is probably one to get if you're a beginner. You don't want to deal with a building or OSD or a computer setup so yeah. you to flight. Now, that being said, though, I always recommend get online, go to the GitHub page, start reading about Betaflight, learn this stuff. But you don't have to. I don't like the stock props on it. Um, that is. But that's that's like the. That's so easy to switch. Yes, the so, props, I would right. say, get some different props. So what props would you recommend? A bullnose three by three, 30, 45, the same 30, size? 30, 45, yeah, they're, just, they're thicker blades, less likely to bend. This one, you, you tumble it once, you're gonna bend the blade. Which you saw out there. Uh, especially if you're gonna go four cell, get rid of these props. Right. If you're gonna fly three cell, you'd probably be okay, but there was jello in the video because of the vibration. So the, on the video, real quick, we were flying a three cell, and yeah. we got about four minutes out there? Yeah, I, said, I think it was right about yeah. four minutes. And you came down with time to spare? Uh, it was right about the bottom of it. Okay, yeah. so about a four minute flight, and you, we flew very well. You flew very. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get on it very because it's a small parking lot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, more just a back and forth. But if someone who's new, that's kind of how they would fly. Yeah, it's, it's again, this is a quad designed for a beginner. Right. This is not for the guy that's going to go compete with it every weekend. Right. It, that's, but that's it does have some get up and go because it thing yeah, kind of. It's, it's got oh, only big gripe I have, and I there's no conformal coating on the ESCs. Uh, we just flew out there, it was wet out there. Um, I could imagine, I got a little bit of grass on the top of it just from landing in the grass and all that wet grass. Um, there's a chance you can burn out an ESC or something like that on this guy. So this is like coating they prevent Yeah, water. it's uh, it's a electrical coating they put on, a conformal uh, coating. Okay. Uh, hopefully the manufacturer will change that and start coating them because that will, I think that's going to be a huge bump in reliability on this thing because it's already very well made. Um, it's just a little shortcoming. I think it was just minor oversight by the manufacturer on that one. But other than that, I like the quad. The, I don't feel like if you bought this right now, you'd be like, oh crap, I bought something that's updated. No, this is actually full, yeah. So. so, I mean, the fact that I was able to run, I can run the newest beta flight on it, I can run D-Shot 600 on it, I think it's a it's a really good choice. Thumbs up, thumbs down, overall. I like it. Yeah, it's a good little quad. But you need different props. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, just something, a little quick review of the Vi uh, ViFly R130. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for our next review, which is coming up. Thanks so. for watching.